Hey guys. <clears throat> Hey folks, just wanted to say hey. Um, as promised, uh, we're going to get started on this Red Letters uh, Part 1. Uh, we'll be going through some stuff here. Uh, so hold on and uh, let's, let's get moving on this. I just want to uh, say at the front of this, this is, this is going to be a multi-part series. Um, Red letters, of course, many of you know that those were the words of Jesus Christ. So I just want you to know that that is what this is all about. And that's what we're going to be uh, working on and studying here uh, so that we can uh, bring to light some of the stuff that uh, has definitely been hidden from Far too many of you uh, through church, through um, these these false preachers, these false uh, witness, these false testimonies of what they are telling you and teaching you. So I just want you to know that we are going to go through some of this stuff and we're going to make sure that uh, you can see and understand some of these things. So um, I'm just going to get to some of these real quick. And I want to talk about where your Bible came from, the translations that we have today. So what translations do you have? Um, many of you probably didn't know that every English Bible... And I'll say that if, if if someone knows better and can prove it to me that uh, I'm not correct in my studies. Every English Bible has come from what is known as the Vulgate. The Vulgate is Catholic. So all y'all hitting on the Catholic and everything else, you have their Bibles and some version of it. Um, and they do have their own separate Bible also outside of these other revisions. Uh, but as you can see there, uh, you can see what is out there today. And uh, so let me uh, show you a couple things. Let me see here where I have that. All right. So that's, that's what we got there. Uh, let me see here. We've got... Just going through some of this right now. Um, okay, so you see that there are videos out there uh, on YouTube that you can go out and you can search for this stuff. I have some excerpts uh, from a, a documentary um, that is uh, pretty eye-opening. I believe that you will enjoy it uh, so let me get to that I don't know if this thing is going to get tagged on us or if it's not going to get tagged on us so what I mean by that is maybe YouTube maybe Facebook will uh, zero out some of the video that uh, I'm going to be showing you um, so let me let me pull it up here um, I have a video that I did offline, uh, been working on to uh, try and uh, show you some of these things. And let me just find it real quick. It is here somewhere. Um, okay. I'm going to bring that up. Okay, I've got it up. Just a quick second here. <clears throat> these writings that we have, there is no known original writings from any of the apostles, uh, even the epistles or letters from Paul are all copies of copies. Um, they know for a fact, and we'll, we'll see it actually in this video, 
um, that things were changed. Um, and we are only going off of hearsay because they didn't write anything down. Um, there, it was just, um, I, I step stories. It was just stories that were passed down. And, uh, so we're, we're going to have some more of this on, on part two, uh, about the sayings of Jesus and, uh, how those, those are pretty, pretty sure. And, and what, what's going on with those. So, uh, again, this message is the red letters. And we are looking at the Gospels today, and we are looking at, at Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John is what this video, not this video, but the video that we're watching parts of um, talk about. And again, I'll, I'll bring in part two, uh, some of the other um, writers of the Gospels, um, and no one uh, scholar-wise um, now, I just want to insert something here. I know there's going to be a lot of people, especially of the apostolic faith, and, oh, well, you know, these guys don't know, and you're believing them over our preachers, and, you know, these guys have the Holy Ghost, and they didn't have the Holy Ghost, and this and that. Well, let's, let's back up a second. If, if, if you have an ailment, and you go to your pastor and say, hey, I've got this feeling in my stomach, and I don't know what's wrong. Where's he going to send you? He's going to send you to the doctor down the street or say, hey, you need to go to the hospital. Let the medical people that know what they're doing give you the advice and, and, and help you. There, there's, so here, here we are, these scholars. So when I say scholars, they, I'm not saying they have high degrees. I'm not saying that they don't. I'm telling you that this is what they study. This is what they chose in their life to do. And, and they match these manuscripts by periods of writings, and, and they go by that. So it's not hard for me to buy this. It's not hard for me to buy the fact that these scribes are adding their own endings. It's not hard for me to buy that at all with man. So it... it when you look at that, and these, these organizations, they want to drill it, drill it, drill it in your head that the Bible, everything it says, is true. Well, that's why I'm bringing some of this out today for you. This is exactly why I think you need to know this, because you're never going to hear it in those, in those sermons. You're never going to hear any of this. It's all about pumped up faith, 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 and then, and, and, you know, man, and this pastor and that that evangelist and oh they got the power of God on them and looking for signs and miracles and wonders and this they're they're all wrong in 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 way they're pushing things this this is for them not you and, and you can see that so clearly once you start understanding that truth is really truth I don't care what I believe I don't care what they believe there there is somewhere out there the absolute truth and i don't believe everything that has been penned in in the bible that we have the king james version or for that matter any of those other versions there were writings these writings were were told over and over and and you know we we we've we've had uh you know preachers come in and many of you if you're if you're long churched or whatever, you've you've seen it. They'll they'll write a little thing on a note and give it to somebody, and then they'll have them tell each other. And you know, we've done that a few times at a few churches I've been in. And and by the time it gets back around, it's it's laughable sometimes, and, and most of the time. So when you look at this stuff, when they park their life, they they put their stake in the ground and 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 preach from the hilltops that this is this and this is that and you're going to go to hell if you don't blah 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 and all this stuff listen here you must work out your own salvation with fear and trembling let god be true and every man a liar and and you know some of you i'm, I'm sure you've you've written me off that's okay i'm i'm proud to be written off by you because if you don't want to hear truth that's okay what God has opened up to me, I'm going to follow. 
and I'm going to I'm going to proclaim it. I don't claim to be right in everything that I say or do, but I can guarantee you I'm seeking for him every day and I'm not falling into the pit of a deception spirit of man. I will not. I will seek God. I will open my heart and my mind to him being led by his spirit. And it makes perfect sense as to why you must lean on the spirit of God because man will fool you every time, whether it be by their own ignorance. Oh, don't get me wrong. I, I totally, I have seen men that, that have totally committed their life to Jesus, to what they're preaching. I have totally seen that they were so excited about this. I was one of them. I'm not saying I'm not excited about it. I'm excited to meet God. I'm, I'm excited to feel after him that happily I might find him. I'm not going to say that these people are not on fire for God in what they think they're on fire for. It's evident. They, they will do many things. They, they, they sacrifice. Just because someone is sacrificing, and, and what's the thing, uh, laying your sword up to, to stand your ground, um, there's a saying, it doesn't come to mind right now, but what they are saying is probably true to what they believe, but it does not make them right. It does not make them truth. It does not mean that they're telling the truth. So this is why it is so important, and Jesus emphasized in the words, and I'm, we're, we're going to show you the last part of the, the video, not today, but where the sayings of Jesus were compiled, and there was, a, there was another book called Q, that it appears that, that Matthew and Luke pulled a lot of their stuff from, as well as from Mark's book and, and his writing. So when, when you look at those things and you begin to search out these things when you truly want to find God and you're not going to just be pigeonholed into some religion and some some uh, friendship deal here oh it's fun I, I I'll tell you right now I've had many wonderful times uh, assembled with with uh, UPC churches and things we've we've had great times I'll tell you straight up I, I don't regret those times but I can tell you today, that we weren't seeking after the right thing. I wasn't seeking after what God really had for me. I was not in the truth. There were so many things that, that were wrong and outside of God. You tell me, and I've, I've already mentioned this, and I'll just quickly mention it again, that you tell me the Jesus that allowed the, the demons go into the swine that was, that was causing this man to cut himself to tear himself apart and to live miserably and demon-possessed and, and such a destitute life and no friends and no nothing and was, was in such darkness that Jesus allowed those demons to go into the swine. Jesus didn't say, hey, kill, dead, you're done, you're no more. He could have, but he didn't. And when the lady was caught in adultery, they brought her out in the streets. This was your, this was your churches. The church brought her out in the street. I'm the so-called. These aren't Jesus's church, by the way. This, this was the religion of that day, and just like the religion of our day. These churches brought out, these members came out with this woman, threw her down on the ground. That's the way it looks in, as I read it in the Bible, anyhow. They had disdain for her. They had rocks in their hands, ready to stone her, and they wanted to catch Jesus and see what he would do and see if he would pick up a stone also. And most of you know the story. And Jesus said, how many of you are without sin here? Why don't you go ahead and cast the first stone? The only one that could have cast the stone was Jesus. And he decided not to. So this was the law of Moses that was completely broken with many witnesses. And what did Jesus do? Had mercy. Now, understanding that was the Jesus that we know. Now, did Jesus throw over the money changers' tables? That's for another day. But 
what I'm telling you here is when you go to the book of Acts and you see Ananias and Sapphira, I think it's in the fifth, fifth chapter of Acts, uh, you can search it, when everybody decided, hey, we're going to sell everything and we're going to come put it all together. Well, when they came, of course, the, the man came and he told him he got so much for the for the land that they sold and and then uh they're like well you you're lying and how they knew i don't know but this is a story this is a story and then all of a sudden it infers that he gave up the ghost and the holy ghost was behind it because you lied to the holy ghost now here we got the holy ghost killing someone because they didn't give all that they were supposed to according to those that were receiving it does that not look like a problem to you in the scripture does that not look like not jesus how are you swallowing this that's exactly what jesus said you swallow a camel but you choke on a gnat you'll you'll suck these stories down that makes no sense of who jesus was you'll take them You'll swallow them, but you can't even love your own brother. That's, that's a problem. They'll condemn you in a heartbeat. They'll throw you to the curb. So when you look at the religion of that day, and then, then here comes his wife, and, and, and she backed up what her husband said. Maybe they didn't want to give it all. Maybe they decided, you know, hey, I don't know where this is all going. We, we, we don't know what's going to happen. Everybody was confused because they thought Jesus was here to stay. Well, he's gone. So they decided not to give everything. They kept a little bit back for themselves for the rainy day or whatever it was. Who cares? It was nothing to those other apostles or, or whoever was that, that was there to condemn them. But then, then the story's told that, that, oh, death lies at the door, same as your husband, and she gave up the ghost, and she died. And at, while they were still carrying her husband away. So if you believe that stuff, I don't believe it. And if it did happen, then they weren't following Jesus. All of them, none of them were following Jesus that were a party to that. You can't swallow those, that, that junk. And I know this may come to a shock to some people, but, but everything in that Bible, did it happen? Maybe. I, I, still, I still feast on, on the Bible. I still read the Bible. I still enjoy it. But I keep it in context. I, I know who Jesus is. I've met him myself. I have received his spirit. It's a spirit of love and kindness and peace. It's a spirit of standard. It's a, it's a spirit of, of being separated from the world and, and, and to loving my brother and my sister and my neighbor as myself. That's the Jesus we serve. And if you think the Holy Ghost is going to kill somebody before their time, even the swine, the, 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 the demon said, oh, you come to judge us before our time. And Jesus said, no. They're like, let us go into the swine. And Jesus like, go. So if he's going to let that happen and not be judge, judging those demons that, that destroyed that man's life and he healed him and cast them out. How do you su suppose that later on in the scripture that these guys were following Jesus or the Holy Ghost and that somehow the Holy Ghost decided to take two Christians that love Jesus, that, that, probably done many things up to that point for, for the work of the Lord, as they called it, as they were, were thinking that God wanted them to do, right? Doesn't mean God wanted them to do what they were doing. That's another, another day. But I'm telling you, these were good people. And God's going to kill them? There's heathens running around. Look at, look at Paul. He was Saul at the time. He was, he was committing Jews to prison. He was party to, to Stephen's death. And, and when Jesus struck him down, as the story says, 
when Jesus struck him down on the on the aisle, or on the uh, road to Damascus, did Jesus kill him? Did the Holy Ghost kill him? No. Well, they could have could have blinded him and brought him in, and and then all of them got gathered around, and all of a sudden, the ghost left him because he had done such cruelness against the church. Why wasn't that a story? But no, you got these two innocent. I say innocent because they didn't have to give that. And I don't know if, like I said, I don't know if somebody just added the story. But this is to help man, to have money, cause fear in your life. So let's go back to the video here real quick and, and, and just, just ponder those things. Man, you gotta you gotta look outside the box here and don't be stuck in this 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 dark box called religion. It's not of God. That's the lie. No, no. Some people don't have an axe to grind. They just want to know truth. And 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 that's that's the way some of this stuff really is. And and I know people um just the main thing that they want to argue with you and, and, and call all this stuff that, that there's just unbelievers and you're going to believe an unbeliever before you believe the scripture. No, some of this is just true. Some of this is, some people are just a, a, as the best as that they know how they are trying to find God as well. And, and they're not going to believe a bunch of religion, a made up stack of, of, of manipulated, twisted, scripture uh that came out so for the most part I, I believe mostly in in the bible is to be true but there are these areas that are you know even and i told someone i said you know they're they're like okay well you know uh even even peter said paul talked about things hard to be understood well i said how about the theory how about the thought that hey Maybe it was hard to be understood or believed because Peter knew better. Peter had eyewitness account of Jesus. And I don't know what, what Peter's character was. I don't know what, what the manipulation of these scribes were. I don't know how this, this story got, got upended as it went along. You know, man has always tried to capitalize on other people's ignorance and this is what has happened no doubt in in many parts of the scripture i do believe you can find god through the scripture i do believe that you can serve god through the scripture but it takes the holy ghost to lead and guide you into truth and he will do that he will put in your conscience he will put his law in your heart he will let you know, as long as you're not going headlong, believe in some deceiving man. And what did Jesus say? Take heed that you're not deceived. And we, we covered that in the, in the scripture. We, we covered that scripture. Um, so when you look at that in the scripture, you look, we, we went on that. So I'm sorry, that's uh, uh, one of the things I wanted to say real quick, you see the red letters, and, and that is, is the premise of, of what we have here, red letters. There are about 31,426 red letters. Now, this is including, this is combining and merging the parallel synoptic of the Gospels when it's said word for word. So that's not recounting those. That's merging those together. So there is literally about 31,426 in the King James Version. I believe this is the King James Version at this person. Uh, let's see. The NS, NASB National Standard, there's a total of 83,680 words. You can look this up. Uh, SynopticGospel.com, you can find it. Uh, but anyhow... That is 48% of the entire gospel is the words of Jesus in red. And so half of this, half of the gospel is all about Jesus, 48%. So when you look at that, 
that's pretty impressive. I, I did not know that before. And uh, so as, as I read that, I was kind of kind of happy to see that, that, you know, 48% of the gospel is Jesus' words. And that's what we're talking about, red letter words. This is the words of Jesus. This is the words that as we know it today, and the best of our ability following this will get us to heaven being led by the Holy Ghost. So my whole ministry here is the fact that what Jesus said, what he meant, if these words in red in the Gospels are to be believed at all or in its entirety, you must throw out many of Paul's writings. I'm not saying whole writings, but the certain things that he says goes totally against whoever's writing that story goes totally against what Jesus would have done. Uh, uh, example in Acts was the, the, the Ananias and Sapphira. We know that couldn't have been Jesus. If it was, then we've got the wrong impression who Jesus was in the red letter words of his writing. Though Jesus never wrote one word of this, penned one thing. But the point here is very clear, and I hope many of you are understanding it. You know, as, as Matthew 24 Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now what we've seen in that video uh, a few minutes ago prior is the fact that they were saying that, you know, the, the, the writings of Matthew, the gospel of Matthew here, um, was written in 66, and it wasn't until 70 AD when the temple really got uh, actually got destroyed by the Romans, um, just the way Jesus said it. And then the other guy says, well, we don't believe that to be true. We believe it to be, you know, just after the first century, uh, after the first hundred years, uh, in the early hundreds, uh, maybe. Uh, so, if that was written before, then it was a true prophecy. If it was written be after, it could have been, you know, thrown in there. So these are things that the scholars look at. These are the things that they try to, to figure out. Now, does that make anything different for me to believe in Jesus? No, it doesn't, doesn't change one iota. Um, I believe what he said, and, and he fulfilled it in my life. And, and that's what happens with many of these things in the, in the scripture. God comes alive in his word. But you have to not fall for a religion. They are not on par with what Jesus said. You, you say, well, oh, well, they, they, they read it. They, they say it. They you know, read from the Bible and they talk about Jesus. Yeah, but they're, they're not in the spirit of Jesus. That isn't the Jesus that, that, that our Bible talks about, that the scripture of the red letter words is actually saying. That's not working. That's not the same. And, and, and when these people get so arrogant and cocky and, and, and they want to talk about this religion and that religion, how theirs is so much better, look right here. Go no further. All these Bibles came from what was passed down and manipulated or interpreted, and I'm not saying funny business or no funny business, I don't know. Neither do you. No one can be sure because we don't even have the original transcripts. We have copies of copies, and we have seen that they have proven that, that they have looked at those parchments of copies, and they have seen in ultraviolet light to where they have described as, as erased out something, and in and, and the footnotes, and ended up changing the ending of, of a whole gospel in, in a scene that they, they had just put forth. So I'm just letting you know today, I'm not throwing any, any water on your fire. I want you to love Jesus. I think that, that we should move forward and, and, and love God and have as much faith as we can in the Holy Ghost, in God's Spirit, and, and be one with Jesus. But these these ministers again like i said they may just totally be ignorant 
and they're just they're just going by the best knowledge that they have, but they're still wrong. They're still wrong. You can't preach this stuff. You can't preach it as you think you know it, and then you turn around and are wrong. So this is a problem with religion today, and people need to understand that. And and so that's what I'm doing here. Part two, uh, we're going to be working on, and we're gonna we're gonna go a little deeper in some of this stuff, and and see some more of the video. Uh, I'll, I'll bring some more clips out. I hope you know it doesn't get clipped out of our video. But uh, anyhow, uh, I'm gonna let you guys go, and I appreciate everybody that watches these videos, and I hope I'm bringing something that helps you to get closer to Jesus, and that you will understand. That these things, if you stick to God and stay away from man, don't take what they have to say. Make them prove it. And, and that's what you got to do. You've got to come and you got to know, this is my soul. I'm not going to leave it to any man. I'm not going to let man dictate to where I go, whether it's hell or heaven. Uh, and, and I'm going I'm to 